anyone who's ever played in a Grey Cup game obviously comes away with vivid memories of the event. Jordan Younger of the Toronto Argonauts played his first Grey Cup game in 2004, the game in Ottawa. The Argonauts beat the BC Lions. Younger's most cherished memory, though, is not something that occurred during the game. It's an incident that occurred just hours prior to that 2004 game and reminded him of a brother's love. And it prompted Jordan Younger to do something very few rookies ever consider doing. My brother was, he was just big smile all the time. He'd light up a room. My mom named him, you know, nicknamed him Bambi when he was little after the cartoon, the deer. He had big brown eyes. Typical big brother, little brother, uh, kind of glad to have each other. I recall uh, when Jordan was born, how excited his brother was. Rather than being by himself, he was delighted to have a brother. He was 10 years older than me, so. You know, I just did what he told me to do, went where he told me to go. Jordan often tells me everything he knows he learned from his brother. Jordan Younger and his older brother, Kerry, were the best of friends, a bond that was strengthened by growing up on the west side of Trenton, New Jersey, where drugs and gang violence were rampant. Well, it's an urban area that just doesn't have, you know, much hope. The school's tough. They, they actually have a police station inside the high school to, uh, so they can handle situations right away. How important was it to have someone like Kerry in your life? Really important in the sense that, like, he knew exactly kind of what to, to let me see and what not to let me see. He was just really good at trying to, I guess, keep me on the straight and narrow, but still kind of, you know, let me figure out who I am. Jordan's parents put him in a private school just outside of Trenton, and it was there that Jordan fell in love with football. He earned a scholarship to the University of Connecticut with hopes of a pro career. He said, well, Mom, when I get out of college and I start making a lot of money, I'm going to buy my brother a red Corvette. I'm going to put a big red bow on it, and that's what I'm going to give him for a present. Kerry, who had returned from a stint with the Navy, started a career in dentistry in Baltimore. One day in 1997, everything changed. Him and the dentist were about to do oral surgery. When the dentist happened to look up and notice him as if he was having some kind of problem. The doctors believed Kerry had cardiac arrhythmia an irregular heartbeat that went undetected. Kerry collapsed and died instantly. I came in the house and my wife was on the phone. And I heard her, I remember her crying, no, no, not my Kerry. Hearing my mother's voice on the phone and she couldn't talk at first. And I, she, I couldn't get her to say what happened. And she said, bam, died. And uh, that was, that was tough. I remember just sitting there arguing with her. I just talked to him yesterday, he's fine, you know, and went back and forth a little bit. And finally, you know, my dad got on the phone and, you know, we talked and I, I understood it after that. Seven years after his brother passed, Jordan was a rookie on a veteran Toronto Argonauts team. When it came time to get a jersey, Jordan asked for a special number. His brother's birthday is July 26. You know, I just think he just was determined he was going to make his brother proud. In 2004, the Argos made it to the Grey Cup in Ottawa. And when the team arrived at their hotel, something startling happened to Jordan. I was thinking about my brother. I was like, I wish my brother could be here. You know, it's a shame he couldn't see it. And, you know, they hand me the key, the key card for the hotel. And I opened it up and it said room 726, just as I'm thinking about it. And I was like, you know, that's a coincidence, but it's a heck of a coincidence. I really just felt like, all right, maybe, maybe, maybe something's happening. Maybe, maybe this is meant to be. In a meeting prior to the game, head coach Pinball Clemens addressed the team. He then asked if anyone else wanted to speak. 
And I wasn't gonna say anything because I was a rookie and you know, I didn't really feel like that was my place. But the feeling in the room, the emotion in the room, kind of pulled me, made me stand up. He says, I know I'm not a veteran guy, he says, but I want to get up and share and say how important this is to me. He says, I wear number 26 because my only sibling, a brother, died, and his birthday was July 26. He says, when we arrived here in Ottawa, my room number was 726. Were the veteran players moved? Of course we were moved. Um, because there's those kind of stories where you understand it's bigger than the game. You could just feel like how everybody was just side by side, shoulder to shoulder, like we were all for each other. To hear that story, it was like, oh yeah, good things will happen uh, for the Argos on this day. After that morning meeting, the outcome of the Great Cup was already decided. We just had to go out at six o'clock to make sure they could fulfill all the commercial requirements. And they are 2004 Grey Cup champions. It's just one of those things where, you know, you feel like, all right, this is bigger than me. You know, I just choose to, to remember in you know, all the positive moments and just thank God for the time he was here. Eight years later, Jordan has now gone from being a rookie to a team captain and has led a revamped Toronto defense back to the Grey Cup game. It's just been great to watch him grow. It makes me proud because now he gets a chance to lead a football club, whereas before he was led by other people, and now he is the guy everybody looks up to. Jordan's a leader off the field as well, as the spokesperson for the Argos anti-bullying campaign. He's been drawing on his experiences from Trenton and sharing them with kids in Toronto. Is it similar, you know, what you do for them to what your brother did for you? The way I do it is, I imagine, would be the way he would do it. He would just talk from his heart. He's just a special guy, and that's, that's why I smile. That is indeed a special story, and Darren and Rod, as we go back to you, think about this. Jordan Younger, since 2004, has twice been cut by the Toronto Argonauts. This is where he wants to play. This is where he lives all year in southern Ontario. You know, I was just thinking, He's what's so good about this league. People that come from, men that come from other countries, the United States in particular, settle here, and as a country, as a community, they indeed make us better. Fellas?